Hello everyone! Well, as we finally appear to be coming to the end of the Switch's lifespan, we've reached the last hurrah when it comes to new game releases. Princess Peach Showtime is currently the only new game Nintendo plans to release this year, at least until we see the next Nintendo Direct, of course. But today, I just wanted to talk about this new release and see if Princess Peach finally getting her own game after nearly a whopping two entire decades was a worthwhile final celebration for the Nintendo Switch. Also, I apologize if I sound off in this video. I'm still recovering from being sick over the weekend, and I'm really trying my best here. So Princess Peach Showtime is the first time we've been given a spin-off centered around someone who isn't Mario or Luigi in an insanely long time. And the first thing I was surprised about when starting the game is that this isn't like Luigi's Mansion where Luigi is the main focus while the other Mario characters are very much still present in the game. Rather, this is entirely Princess Peach's solo adventure. No other Mario characters appear in this entry outside of the Toads. Not even Mario or Bowser make an appearance. And honestly, while I was initially taken aback by this, I actually think it's an amazing decision as it not only now doesn't have to waste screen time on the other members of the cast, but it also gives the perfect opportunity to finally give Peach some kind of personality. Something that we haven't seen in basically any Mario entry that isn't Mario Strikers or Smash Bros. That's one thing that I really appreciate this game doing. Peach has always been this weird black sheep in the Mario cast. Basically everyone except for her has a personality. Even Daisy and Waluigi, who are usually only delegated to the side games, have so much more personality to them. Meanwhile, Peach has always been the one with the least going on for the longest time. Again, outside of those aforementioned side games. But here, she's finally able to become her own person and it really shows. It's great seeing her finally have a personality thanks to everything that goes on during this game. Every single level gives her a brand new opportunity to show off some new facet of her personality. And I think this works amazingly. I genuinely hope they keep her the same as she is in this game in future titles. Because her just being kidnapped over and over again never really gave her a chance to shine. Another great thing about this game is the villains. Being as this is a Peach solo story, it means that an entirely new set of villains had to be created. And being genuine here, I actually kind of love Madame Grape and her little gremlins. As a theatre kid myself, I really love the lengths she and her minions go to during the game. I'm genuinely surprised at how good of a villain Madame Grape is. Despite her short amount of screen time, she's a genuinely imposing threat. And the small details we get from her honestly make her one of my new favourite Mario villains. It's so refreshing to finally get a villain who's just evil for the sake of being evil. A lot of Mario villains, with a couple of exceptions like Fawful for example, always have to have some kind of sympathetic aspect to them. But not this time. Madame Grape is just pure evil and I actually kind of love her for it. I wish we got to see more of her in the game, and I kind of wish she was more of an active threat, but for a completely new villain who only has a set amount of time to make herself known, I genuinely think they did an amazing job with her. Also, a brand new cast means a brand new sidekick for Peach to interact with. And while I definitely think Stella is probably the weakest of Peach's companions, I mean, let's be real here. Toadsworth will never be beaten, and it's an injustice he's been abandoned by Nintendo. And Parry was probably the most fun sidekick in any mainline Mario game. I do still really enjoy Stella's connection with Peach though. They have a really cute and wholesome dynamic throughout the game. And it's really refreshing to just have a simple partner who perfectly complements Peach. But enough about the story and characters. How's the actual game? Well, it's interesting. The game is split into 30 total levels, with 3 levels dedicated to each ability. And as for how each level plays, it's actually pretty interesting to look at. Each power-up has their own unique attributes to them, and all 30 levels surprisingly make really great use of them. There's a lot going on in basically every stage, and it made just wandering around and exploring that much more fun. I really love the sparkle mechanic that the game introduces. 
It added a really unique flair to the game that I really appreciated. It can be used at basically any time to interact with the elements of the world or other characters. And given how it's something you can only do without already using a power-up, it was such a creative way to allow Peach to interact with the world. And honestly, the results of some of the interactions were also some of the funniest parts of the game for me. It's also a pretty genius way to sort of make Peach actually feel involved with these worlds rather than just someone who's there for the sake of saving them. That might sound weird, but let me explain. One of my biggest concerns with the game was that Peach would only actually begin interacting with the other characters once she'd gained that world's power-up. But thanks to this discount Rosalina spin jump she has, it actually allowed her to really feel like a part of the performances, instead of just being an outsider looking in. Also, I just love these new characters they added. They're so adorable, and the fact that they can express their personalities just through the color of their noses is such a brilliant touch that really just continues adding to this game's insane amount of charm. The power-ups themselves, though, are much more of a mixed bag, ranging from outright pointless to unironically fun and interesting to use. And I think in order to explain why, we need to go through each of them one by one. So each stage is converted into a generally short experience that tells a decently lengthy narrative across its three total levels, with each aspect of the power-ups being built on the further into the game you get, and while I don't really like all of them, I can definitely appreciate how each of them were really well integrated into the game, and honestly, just how fun they were to use. You can tackle these stages in any order, but I'll just be going through them in the order that I ended up doing. So the first power-up is Sword Fighter, which has you rescuing a king from Madden Grape's goons, and this is by far the most middle-of-the-road power-up. It's fast and pretty fun to use, but also feels like it basically plays itself. As long as you're even remotely paying attention to what's going on, you'll essentially never take damage, as the game can sometimes just auto-input the dodge command for you. I still enjoy playing these levels, but they're generally pretty middling, and the story around them is also just fine, honestly. There's nothing really special about it, and it's a decent start to the game, but there's definitely levels that have much better stories. Next up is Chef, and this was probably one of the worst ones to place in the demo, as this is easily one of the worst power-ups of the bunch. The Chef ability has you only doing two things throughout all three of its levels, and that is baking cookies or putting icing on cakes. That's it. That is all you do. I understand it's kind of hard to make three really interesting levels around a chef ability, especially given how limiting the moveset is, but if that's the case, then why was it even included? Cowgirl is up next, and yeah, okay, this one is one of my favorite abilities in the whole game. Riding around on horses and using barrels as projectiles to slam into the face of enemies is genuinely a really fun time. The entire storyline is also really fun and basically never gets old. I definitely feel like they should have allowed us to play this level in the demo instead of the chef one, because that did not leave a good first impression. Regardless, the cowgirl stages are all genuinely insanely fun, enjoyable, and decently high octane levels. Next is the ninja ability, and would you look at that? Another amazing stage! I really love how this one uses the simplistic aspects of the game and really takes advantage of them, using the capabilities of what a ninja power-up would provide to its fullest extent. It's a ton of fun sneaking around these stages and performing skips with wall jumps and slashing at enemies, plus the neat detail of a substitute upon being spotted and teleporting back to safety is a really nice touch. Again, I'm shocked at how fun these last two levels were given the incredibly mediocre start. Next up is... And hey, that's three in a row! The Phantom Thief shows, yes I know it's called Dashing Thief in the game, but I mean, come on, this is literally just Joker's outfit if you put a hat on him. Anyway, the Phantom Thief shows are another set of genuinely really fun ones. 
The actual ability this power-up gives leaves a lot to be desired, honestly. The grappling hook is really unintuitive at times and generally only likes to grab onto things if you're incredibly precise. But everything else about this one is legitimately really fun. It's another fast-paced, high-octane, enjoyable adventure with yet another really fun story. This is also probably the first stage where the game really begins to amp up its creativity and how fun the stages are to play. The first four stages were a pretty mixed bag and were generally overly simplistic, maybe with the exception of Ninja, but from the Phantom Thief onwards, they really begin leaning into these levels and started going the whole mile with them. You can definitely tell how confident the devs were in the experience here, as even the levels I don't really like all that much still have a ton of charm to them. Next up is Ice Skater, and yeah, the streak ends here. I really don't understand why this one was even included, given how at the very least Chef had some form of creativity with the cakes you were baking, but Ice Skater genuinely has nothing going for it. Much like with Chef, it's the exact same stage repeated three times over, unlike the others which all have you doing different things during their stories. Ice Skater was probably my least favourite given how completely devoid of creativity it was. The Power Up only allows you to do essentially one thing, but unlike the others that worked that thing into its level layout or built the world around it, Ice Skater is just that, ice skating. Now, don't get me wrong, I personally love ice skating, but when you're translating it into a game with an already limited moveset, it just comes off as feeling like a rejected WarioWare level, as opposed to a completely original level for this game. That's actually kind of a problem I have with a few of these. The levels that are great really put in the effort to make themselves stand out, but the ones that don't, like Chef, Ice Skater, and one more we'll get to in a moment, are so devoid of any charm, personality, creativity, or some of the fourth thing that I'm sure the other levels have, that it really feels like these are rejected WarioWare levels. And they're so insanely simplistic that they make Yoshi's Woolly World seem like Sekiro in comparison. I thought the villain for this set of levels was fine enough, I guess? He was cheesy in a way that made him enjoyable to watch, and I really like what they did with him. But unfortunately, that doesn't save this set of levels from being by far the worst in the game. Although, rather mercifully I might add, they also happen to be the shortest. Detective is up next, and after how bad Ice Skater was, I was really hoping for something good this time. Something I could really sink my teeth into. And what I got was... An interesting case, pun 100% intended. The first stage of Detective left a really bad first impression. It basically did nothing for its entire runtime, and the only part about the first case that I enjoyed was the joke of these tiny grapes stealing this huge art mural, only to have ended up just covering it with a curtain. I actually thought that was a really decent joke, but other than that, it just felt kind of bland and boring. With that said, however, the second and third stages of Detective actually ended up being some of my favourites in the whole game. They basically do the exact opposite of the first stage, fully leaning into the cheesiness of the genre they're parodying and taking everything to extreme heights. I was genuinely surprised at how well they managed to turn around such a bad first impression. As for Mermaid, this one kind of had the opposite effect to Detective, it started out genuinely really fun, but as it kept going, it was clear that they had no other ideas for this power-up and dumped all their creative designs into the first level. So the next two just feel like worse versions of the same thing. It still started out really fun, but this is another one that very obviously dipped into rejected WarioWare minigame territory, and you can kind of tell. Unlike with Ice Skater and Chef, though, you can see that they did try to put some interesting ideas forward in the later levels, but it really didn't come together all that well. Now it's time for the Mighty Power-Up, which is a really dumb name, so I'll be calling it Action Hero from here on out. And if you're wondering where all the creativity for the Mermaid Power-Up stages went, well, it's right here. This is another genuinely amazing ability, easily one of the most fun ones the game has to offer. 
It's so satisfying picking up huge buses and tossing them at enemies. And punching giant meteors, flying through space, crushing invading ships. Everything in these set of levels is just done so well. And it all flows perfectly. There was never a moment in these stages where I wasn't enjoying myself. And I actually found myself wanting to go back to these stages just to keep having fun in them. And finally, Kung Fu. While I was initially worried this stage was just going to be a knockoff version of the ninja power-up, it actually ended up just being a more fun version of Swordswoman. It keeps the fast-moving nature and really manages to make you feel every punch. It manages to bring so much to the table that I found myself actively returning to these stages as well. This is by far the best ability in the game. And it also comes packing the best mini-boss. Seeing Peach just mercilessly beat the shit out of this poor bastard was honestly one of the most satisfying moments in the whole game. Definitely the best overall power-up and by far the most fun one too. What I do find really interesting and honestly kind of shocking is the fact that despite me outright hating some of these levels given their obscene lack of creativity and just generally not really feeling like any effort was put into them, the third stages of each ability where you have to rescue the real stars of each show were, honestly, really enjoyable. Yes, even Chef, Ice Skater, and Mermaid. It really caught me off guard just how much fun I was having with these final levels, given how I was basically doing everything I could to avoid them beforehand. The ones I already loved just kept improving with things like Kung Fu and Cowgirl having arguably some of the most creative levels I've seen in a long time, while the ones I didn't enjoy playing finally got a chance at redemption and they damn well earned it. Because, surprisingly, I was actually having fun racing the chef at stacking up this huge cake, or doing this daring escape sequence with the ice skater, or even just stopping these huge tornadoes with Mermaid. These final levels massively improved the experience for me, and were an amazing way to end the game. You can actually challenge them before the final floor of the theatre, as long as you've completed the two levels of that ability beforehand, but honestly, I just had more fun waiting until the end of the game and then barreling through them all as one final curtain call. It actually managed to make the whole experience tie up in a really satisfying way. And while, yeah, sure, I do wish they actually tried to do anything different with some of the more restrictive abilities, I slowly began coming around to them during these third levels, as you could see that even if it didn't work out all too well, they were still very obviously trying to go out on a high note. And yeah, they did that perfectly. It does still make me wonder why they didn't even try to make some of the levels more varied given how some abilities have levels built around what they can do with such a tight moveset, while others just do one thing and rigidly stick to it. But regardless, these final levels were a great way to end the game. Now, as for the game's bosses, I actually surprisingly enjoyed all of them. They all use the game's mechanics to their advantage, and while I do kind of wish we could have used some of the power-ups from the stages in order to take them on, I think what they gave us was actually really well executed. There was never really a point at which I wasn't enjoying these. I do think the third boss is a little weak and definitely needed some tweaking to improve it given how you barely do anything to defeat it, but the rest of them were all insanely well done. I really enjoyed how they all managed to be insanely creative and how their abilities perfectly lent themselves to the aspect of this all taking place on a stage. I do kind of wish we got some more setup for them or had any reason to know of their existence beforehand. I don't know, maybe just a small cutscene to show them overpowering the theatre along with Madame Grape at the beginning of the game. Anything like that to just show that they already existed in the world rather than them just popping up out of nowhere. But for what we were given, I genuinely had a blast fighting all of them. And dear god, I love their designs. Especially the fourth boss being a literal spotlight lion was such a genius idea. Honestly, I'm not going to show it in this video, but even the final boss was legitimately enjoyable even if it did end up dragging on a bit. I'd really love to see these characters and themes return in a later game. Or hell, maybe even a sequel where Daisy joins the fray too. There's so much potential with a game like this, 
And while yes, I would definitely prefer it if these were stretched out into longer levels or maybe even an entire world delegated to each ability a la Super Mario Odyssey, I really think there's an insane amount of potential for a sequel here. Maybe combining the abilities in some form or making it more of an open world style game where you can swap power-ups on the fly and you have to use them to traverse a much larger world. Maybe Madame Grape returns and manages to turn the whole world into a stage play. That way we'd still have the whole gimmick of the game still being intact and you could expand more on the world and power-ups. But honestly though, I don't think it really needs any of that. This game is carried by such an insane amount of charm that it works perfectly. And honestly, given all the high intensity games that have been releasing recently, it was really nice to just kick back, relax and enjoy the show that Princess Peach gave us. It's nowhere near a masterpiece of an experience, but if you just want to play a game that asks basically nothing of you and is a genuinely enjoyable and smooth sailing experience, then I'd 100% recommend this. With all that said, those are my thoughts on Princess Peach Showtime. Again, I apologize for a much shorter video this week, I still wanted to get something out despite still being sick. But regardless, if you enjoyed this one even a little bit, don't forget to leave a like on it. While you're down there, be sure to subscribe to help me on the road to 10k. Comment your thoughts on Princess Peach Showtime down in the comments below. Join my Discord server to be a part of my community, all that good stuff, and until next time, stay safe everyone. Peace.